Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. Today I want to talk a little bit about powder coating mechanical components. The first, the first rule of powder coating mechanical components is you cannot have anything that moves um, that you powder coat. You have to take everything apart into its individual components. Absolutely, positively. In this case, we've got a, a differential from an MGA and uh, Kurt got this all prepped to send out to our local sandblaster, Randy. And you'll see that he's, he's got the, the front on this uh, with a gasket here, and then we've got double nuts on each of the studs because the, um, the powder coating will get onto the threads and prevent you from threading a nut on. And if you just put one nut on, then some of the thread would be exposed and that would have gripped some powder coating. You couldn't get the nut off. So by putting two nuts on, then the entire stud is, is uh, preserved. The guts are out of, out of the diff housing. They're totally removed. And we've got a little device here with some washers that blocks up on the inside and helps prevent sand from getting inside. It only helps to prevent. It doesn't keep the sand from getting inside, but not so much sand gets inside. My standard line about sandblasting, which is the first step of powder coating, is sandblasting is like screwing on the beach. Sand gets everywhere. So we have, we, we have to prevent it from getting in as many places as possible. Here we've got the, the, the drain plug is put in. We've got a bolt in the threads. Uh, for the swing assembly, for the uh, handbrake, the bolt is in for the threads for the filler. Again, over here we've got double nuts on the side of where the uh, strap, the limiting strap goes. And on the ends here, uh, where, the, where the bearings ride, uh, we don't have this tape in stock, but we told Randy, make sure this is well covered. So by the time you take this off, because powder coating involves, I don't know, they get it up to 400 degrees. I, I know it gets up hot enough to, to melt lead, but by, by Randy having put this tape on, on here, this area doesn't get sandblasted and it doesn't get powder coated. So we've got this thing really trapped, but before we begin to assemble this guy, he comes totally apart and he goes outside and he gets the power washer. I mean, there's no way, and you blast and blast and blast and blast because four or five grains of sand is nine or 10 grains of sand too many. Uh, you, you, I, put, I put together a diff one time for a guy who had powder coated his, um, excuse me, he'd put it together and he got 700 miles on it and every single bearing and the crown wheel and pinion were toast, to use a common breakfast expression. And we had to replace every bearing, the crown wheel and pinion, it was a mess. And it was because a little tiny bit of sand had been left inside. It doesn't take much to ruin mechanical components. Sand's really hard. Um, I had a guy one time who came by, he had an Austin Healey engine on a trailer. And I said, where are you going with that? And he goes, oh, I'm going to get a sandblast. I said, what? Sandblast an engine? He says, oh, I've got all the, all the holes, everything is all, it's all taped up. No sand can get inside. No, sand gets everywhere. You know, you, you cannot sandblast anything that is, um, that is together that you're going to use. You have to take it all into component pieces. Let me show you the backing plates here. Uh, these, you know, the backing plates are all powder coated. And powder coating is the nuts. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it, they're all just um, coatings, right? I mean, the paint company used to sell paint, now they sell coatings, the new word. Just like uh, when I was in school, we had equations. Now the kids have to deal with algorithms. So anyway, um, powder coating is paint, but, it's, but it is dried in a different way. It's sandblasted, they put a static charge on this guy, the uh, powder powder from the powder coating adheres to the metal and then they put it up to 400 degrees something like that and that that coating melts and becomes one 
becomes one with that sandblasted surface. This is the greatest way, expensive way, but the greatest way to do any kind of restoration on your car is, is powder coat. Powder coat. And you know, here on the back end, I don't know if you can come in tightly enough and see see the writing here. It, it depends the uh, the angle, of the light, and everything. But but uh, you know, this says L H. So you know, most of the stuff is identified. Obviously, left hand because the other one in the same spot says R H. Right hand. You know, so uh, putting things back together, you have to be cautious. And then um, my customer uh, elected to have his brake drums done in safety yellow. Um, you'll see this in a couple years when the car is all done at the shows. This is an MGA safety yellow. And again, the tape has been placed on the inside to prevent it from, from getting on the contact surface where the, where the uh, uh, shoes would run. So I think we'll probably send this out to the to the uh, machine shop and have them just skim it, make it all, all nice and clean in, inside. So um, you can argue with the color, um, but the powder coating is absolutely beautiful. And if you get dirt or something on it, all it takes is a spritz of carburetor cleaner. Um, so uh, never use gasoline to clean. The coral area is gasoline, it's the best cleaner. Um, or a soap and water, it all just comes off this powder coating that's so nice. So, when you have anything powder coated, it must be absolutely separated. If, the, if whatever you want to powder coat comes into 18 pieces, it better come into 18 pieces, because once you powder coat it, it isn't going to move. Top bows are, you know, it's so nice to have top bows powder coated, but if you powder coat them, then those areas behind straps don't get any powder coating and all the hinge points become very, very stiff. I was just in Toronto this weekend and saw a uh, set of top bows which the guy had, had um, chromed, beautiful, chromed, okay? But he had to take the entire assembly apart, so they called be buffed and chrome plated. And then he said he went to put it back together and there's about 400 pieces. Well, that's a gross exaggeration. There might be 40 um, pieces of this of this top bow, and he said he had to lay it next to an another one, and it was quite a task to get it all back together. He happened to be in uh, Morgan Hill, California, in two weeks, April, I don't know, something, um, towards the end of the month, two weeks from now. I, I can't even tell you what today is. Oh, it's the 16th. Yesterday was tax day. So in two weeks, I'm going to be out in Morgan Hill at On the Road again. So you've signed up, wonderful. I don't know if they got any spots left. I know they're nearly full or full, but if you have a chance to come out, meet and greet, love to see you. I know they've got a pub night going on Friday, uh, Friday night. So if you can't make it to the deal on Saturday or Sunday, I'd love to see you Friday night. Hey, until then, safety fast.